surrounded by your blood oh, Cause you made a way Oh, you made a way Oh, you made a way But on that day We seemed as a dark star A violet hole It broke through and shook the ground and I passage in Revelation chapter 4 the angel of the Lord saying to John come up here and I will show you 
This is the heart of God for a generation is to reveal Jesus, to reveal God to the world. Jesus says this in John 17, this is eternal life that you may know God and how so that you may know Jesus Christ whom he has sent. God is seeking to open up eyes. We've seen that scene in Revelation 4 and 5. We see angels bowing before the throne of God. We see heavenly creatures worshiping, crying out, just as was spoken tonight, holy, holy, holy. There is none else like you. Their attention is captured. There's nothing that you can do to provoke them or to distract them or to tempt them to look away because they've seen the face of the Son of God. God is seeking to open our eyes again, eyes that have been closed by sin. When Adam and Eve were standing and worshiping and communing before the tree of death, they sought to buy for themselves wisdom and were deceived. And in that moment, their eyes were opened to a whole new world, a whole new scope and scene of reality by which from that point on, human history has been dictated by. I'm reminded of a man who was persecuting the church, Saul, Paul, a Pharisee of Pharisees who sought to persecute the church of God. And in Acts chapter 9, the voice of the Lord reaches out in the midst of space and time and he calls his name. And when he does, he goes blind, blind forever to what sin had opened the eyes of the human race to. He couldn't see anymore. All he could see and hear was the voice of the beloved. And when his eyes were restored and he was filled afresh with the Spirit of God, he now had a new lens and paradigm on life. That's called life. God has come to restore life, to give us life. We see in that scene, that beautiful scene in Revelation 4 and 5, worship. The creation was made for him, to enjoy him, to know him forever. And then we see just a few chapters later in Revelation 14, God sends out one of these angels that minister before his face, that stand before the face of the Lord. He sends them out. And it says in verse 6, I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to all those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. As God is pouring out his judgments, his righteous judgments and redemptive mercy at the end of the age, He's inviting humanity that has largely rejected him into the same experience of Revelation 4 and 5. He's inviting them to join, and this is what he says. He says with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who has made the heaven and the earth. Fear the Lord. It's in this hour that we believe that God is seeking to restore the fear of God to his church. The fear of God that dictates Revelation 4 and 5, angelic creatures can't look away. We see the same scene in Isaiah chapter 6 where they cover their faces so that they themselves would not be seen, not because they're afraid to behold, but they don't want to be the center of attention. They don't want to be what it is that sin deceives humanity into, self-obsession with self-idolatry that leads us to self-destruction. Jesus wants to set us free by restoring the fear of the Lord. The Word of God says the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge, revelation knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. Psalms 25 says that God has reserved friendship with Himself for those who fear Him. And to those He will reveal His covenant. It says that Jesus delighted in the fear of the Lord. God is seeking to baptize His church in this hour and in these last days in which we live with the fear of God the beauty of the fear of the Lord. And you may wonder, why is it so necessary to, for us to hear the message of the fear of the Lord? Sometimes we don't really understand what the fear of God is and why it's so important for it to be, re to be restored. But I want to read a passage quickly from Romans chapter 3. In Romans chapter 3, this is the indictment against the human race. This is the situation in which we live. We see the beginning of all things and the end of all things in Revelation 4 and 5. The epicenter of all things real. That is reality. Everything else is the illusion. Everything else is the shadow, the distortion. And what is it that they are caught up in? They are caught up in the worship of the one, in the divine knowledge of the one, the reception of communion with the one, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's what they're doing. And that's what we will enter into forever. But look what it says about the creation. It says in verse 10, as it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks God. That's what God is after, people that would seek him. 
All have turned aside together. They have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. You know what that means? That means that God doesn't have to go to great lengths to figure out that we are a fallen people, that the world is underneath the indictment of sin. It can just go, he can go right into our mouths, into our speech, and out of the abundance of our, of our speech, out of our mouths, our heart is revealed, the things that we treasure. The things that we treasure are the things that we live for, the things that we have affection in. That's what it says in the Word of God. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Their paths are ruin and misery. The way of peace they have not known. And here is the climactic statement right here. Because there is no fear of God before their eyes. They haven't beheld Him in glory. They haven't beheld His beauty. They've been invited in the gospel in the last days. It's an invitation to the world to fear God and worship Him. An invitation to that throne room encounter that we see in Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5. And I recognize that we have lived in a generation, especially in the West, and unfortunately it's spread around the world where preachers often advertise Jesus as a product of our own happiness. As if He's the means to our own goal and end, where we can stamp His name on our plans and agendas and ask for the blessing of God. A man-centered worldview. God invites us to look up and to look at Him. To fear God is to live for His glory. It's to be consumed with Him, it's to love Him. We don't just string together passages from the Bible on Sunday mornings or midweek services to make, to use God to make our point. Listen, God is the point. God is the point of the scriptures. He's the point of our existence. He's the reason we're breathing right now and all things are moving into that direction. The worship of Him was all in all. The fear of God frees us from the rebellion of lawlessness and the pretense of our own self-righteousness because it takes our eyes off of ourselves and sets the eyes of our hearts, the affection of our hearts upon Him and Him alone. It frees us from self-idolatry in a culture that is steeped in self-idolatry. Where everybody wants to be known, everybody wants to be worshipped. Jesus wants to set us free to bring us back to life. May God baptize His church with the fear of the Lord in this hour. The fear of God frees us from the sting of the fear of death. Death is all about the devil seeking to put us into corners and to cause us to try to protect our life. Jesus says that he who seeks to save his life will lose it for my sake. We don't fear death. We don't fear death. We're not trying to control our lives. You know what that means? That means Jesus alone controls your destiny. Jesus alone can control your destiny. The fear of God frees us from the fear of man. We don't have to fear what man can do to us, take away from us, what they say about us, laws that may change or not change, people that may hate us or not hate us. We can love without reserve because we have given our heart to Him and Him alone. God does not frighten us to submission. He doesn't use fear to cause us to love Him. Godly fear draws us with cords of love. F the fear of the Lord makes possible for us to see Him as He is so that we can behold Him as the merciful High Priest, the King of all. We want to pray right now. And let's just join our hearts in faith and ask God to baptize His church with holy fear, godly fear. Fear that's synonymous with the love of God. Fear that's synonymous with the mercy of God. Fear that will liberate us from our sins. Fear that will lift up our eyes so that we can hear the beloved voice that says, come up here and I will show you wonderful, beautiful things. I will show you my son. When I take your eyes off yourself, when I take your eyes off of the idols of this life that are passing away, they're under the righteous judgment of God. He says, look up and see me and me alone. Lord, we ask you for a baptism tonight in the holy fear of the Lord, that you would wash our eyes, Lord, with the pure water of the Word and grip us, even as you gripped Isaiah when he saw the Lord high and lifted up. Oh God, blind us to the things of this life, just like you did Paul when he heard the heavenly voice. Call us up, even like you called John. Lord, we want to behold you and see you. We want to live in the midst of space and time. And even in the midst of this Babylon system, Lord, we live and we anticipate your return. We live for your return. God, open our eyes to see and our ears to hear the call of the Lord that says to the world with an eternal gospel, fear God, 
and worship him alone thank you Jesus thank you Jesus just take a moment right now and let's just ask God to seal this in our hearts seal us by the fear of the Lord keep us by the fear of the Lord keep us by the fear of the Lord give us revelation knowledge Lord and the wisdom of God bring us into the friendship of the beloved open our eyes to see you and you alone be the sum total Lord of all of our affections be the sum total of all of our hopes fill us with the love of God baptize us in the fear Take us up, take us up. 